Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about <coughs> introspection. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, how did you introspect as a software engineer? Well, so what I usually do is that I try to think about the things that I lack and the things that I fear. And the usual the, the reason why I do this is because these are the the pieces of the puzzle that are usually missing if that makes sense because uh, I, I'm a big believer in end-to-end -end understanding of whatever you try to master. So an example of that is basically that my my argument is uh, that for you to be a well-rounded software developer you're basically going to have to accept the fundamental problem of the, of well I don't want to get too philosophical with you but of your profession and that is that regardless of if you're front end back end ops whatever you are all of this stuff that you need in order to ship value because value is the thing that most people are uh, they care about at the end of the day all of those things are tied into something else now what i mean by that is that uh, a very no a very common thing uh, hopefully this example will make sense to you a common thing that i see is that in front end for example you have a lot of designers who start out as UX designers and then go into front-end development and one of the most common reasons they give me for doing that transition is because they feel limited they feel as you know I design the thing but I also want to code it because I feel like if I can't code it I can't actually get at the value that I'm trying to do right and here's the kicker about that when they then become front-end developers they realize that oh damn it now I'm limited by the back end. Now I need to understand the back end in order to deliver the front end. And then they become de the back end developers. Well, I'm not saying necessarily, I hope you sort of understand that. And then you get to the back end and you realize that, damn, I can't ship my things, I can't host them, I can't do all this stuff. And now you need to go into DevOps or like operations sort of work. And so the bubble expands, like you're, you add more and more to your uh, repertoire because the total size of what you need to know in order to ship software efficiently is bigger than any one of these areas. Now that is the thing that I use as my tool of introspection. I try to understand within myself what parts of the software delivery process am I not so good at. Because the good part about that is that that means that it's almost a bit like a pieces of a puzzle. I try to figure out what pieces I am missing and what I'm not so good at and what I am pretty good at. And I try to continuously figure out, all right, how can I make sure that if I need to build an entire IT system, could I do that? I don't have to be a master of everything, I don't have to be the best of the best at it, but could I do that? Because the understanding that I get from knowing how to ship an entire digital system means that I am confident in my abilities as a software developer. Because the confidence that I get from understanding how to do all the things is the thing that gives me personal strength. It is the thing that gives me the ability to ship value. And that is at the end of the day what matters to most people. In a, it's irrelevant for most situations. Like as I it's the sort of, it's the problem of existence itself, right? When, by existing now this gets very philosophical, but you are limited as as a human being, as anything that exists, and your purpose or like your this the the constant struggle is always to find those limitations. What are the borders of those limitations and trying to bridge them somehow? Because if you did not have any limitations, you would be the universe, as far as we know, at the very least. 
and the same thing goes for your profession. And I promise you guys, you, it doesn't stop there, guys. When you get to the point where you can do all the things within IT, and it's not impossible, it's just very it takes a long time, and it usually requires a lot of things. Like, even if you could do all the things in an IT company, there are other things that you will start to realize that there are certain specific things that you can't actually execute on, you can't actually do, because the, the, like, it never stops, guys. It stops, guys. It just continues forever and ever. But you can't. The more of like the the more well-rounded your knowledge is, at least for me, the more the more secure I feel in that I can solve all the things that I need to solve. The other part is the fear, which is sort of tied into this. The less I know, the less I feel like I understand how things work and so forth. The more anxious I get. When I feel like there's a threat to my to like uh, my ability to perform my tasks or do well or so forth and so forth, because of course I'm a people pleaser uh, to a certain degree, of course, uh, which means that I have expectations on myself on behalf of everybody else, even though they might not have those expectations, I have them for them because I want to make sure that people feel like, yeah, I'm a competent software developer, I know what I'm doing, and they feel secure, etc., etc. That so you put your you you put the pressure on yourself basically. And the fear comes from when you feel as if you can't meet the imagined criteria, and sometimes the real criteria of, I mean, some people actually do have expectations on you. Th that, that fear is something that I try to look at a lot as well, because it my, the, the goal for me, uh, at the very least when I do introspection and so on, is to figure out the reasons as to why I feel discomfort because that discomfort tells me something. If I feel discomfort or fear or something like that, that basically means that I have a weak spot somewhere in my armor set, or like my ficti fictional armor set. And that weakness is something that I want to look at and understand why I feel that way and try to... I'm not saying not feel it, I'm saying get to a place where that is no longer an issue for me. I can't, I know I can never be like, you know, you nobody's gonna be like immune to the things that they fear or the things that don't feel so good or so forth. But I want to get to a point where I feel the strength, that I have the strength to, even if it sucks, even if it's not fun, I can get through this thing. And I will be proud, I will be proud uh, over myself when I'm done with it. And that's the thing, uh, that's the reason why I look at what I fear. Because if I'm scared of, you know, being blamed for releasing things to production or causing bugs or whatever, that basically means that I still have a, uh, something within me that that makes me believe that I'm not good enough or that, you know, that I can't, like I, it, it's, it's a source of discomfort for me. And I want to get to that state where I realize that the things that do go wrong when they go wrong, it's not due to that I'm bad at what I do or something like that. I've followed all the things. Like It's just a mistake. It's just something that basically means that, okay, this thing happened. It's not great, but at least I can feel secure in that, well, I'm still valuable. I still have, you know, a... I still I have the skills necessary and the reason why things go bad is because sometimes things go bad because the less that I f I'm afraid that I will disappoint other people or I won't do well as a professional the less time I spend uh, suffering over the mental gremlins that tell me that I'm not good enough etc etc so what I want you to take away from this is that the way that I usually introspect at the very least is that I mostly I focus on two sorts of areas. I try to m more work towards mindfulness of course and so forth and focus on things that are positive and calming but the thing that I usually try to focus on are the things that I lack and the things that I'm afraid of. I don't try to dwell on them, it's very difficult to not dwell on them of course because you know 
sometimes your brain wants to tell you that you're not good enough etc etc it's very easy to dwell on the things that are not so positive because the things that are not that are positive are usually things that are not a threat to you and we're very, very humans on average and me is, is also <laughs> in particular very very hardwired to dwell on the things that are not so good even if a lot of stuff is really really good so you, I try to remember to focus on that sometimes as well. But the reason when I do it in a constructive way is because if I can figure out the things that I'm lacking, that builds confidence and strength because I know that my confidence and sense of self-worth is measured in how well do I feel that I understand the things that I need to get the value and the results that I and my coworkers and like my employers and so forth are looking for. Do I feel like I feel a purpose? Do I feel like I am able to produce something that brings value into the world? And the more I understand my field, the more able I am to do that and the happier I feel about the work that I, and the, the, the better I feel about myself. And then the other part is what I'm afraid of, because I know that fear, at least from my perspective, is just something that means that, well, I feel discomfort from this, this is a weakness that I have, it's okay to have that weakness, but I would rather get to a point where I, it doesn't control my life in a very direct way. There's always fear for something, you're always afraid of something, but I want to get to a point where that fear is not so crippling that I can't deal with it. And so I have to really ask myself, why am I afraid of certain things? Because I believe, at least for myself, that by trying to understand the things that I'm afraid of and working on not being afraid, I will grow as a person, which further brings me back to what I was saying. It increases my competence as a person it doesn't always have to be coding related it doesn't have to be if being afraid of you know making bad unit tests or something like that it can be being afraid of taking on more responsibility within the company and being afraid of not being liked by your co-workers etc etc because that fear is a source of pain that is the most common source of pain at least for myself and I believe a lot of other people the same way it's not so common for a lot of the average person to feel a lot of physical pain uh, hopefully at the very least in your in your day most of the pain that you feel as a human is usually mental you're doing it to yourself and it usually comes from fear anxiety and insecurity and uncertainty and so forth and my argument is that the, if you understand what you are afraid of and you get exposed to it in a controlled manner to the point where it's not so scary anymore the fear and the pain goes away because everything that is unknown or uncertain is usually a little bit scary the best cure I argue for insecurity and fear is exposure and overcoming and so these are the things that I try to focus on have a great day